Hey guys, this is Chris with investingwithchris.com and in this lesson I want to show you how to calculate bonds. There is some complexity when it comes to a certain formula and that is the yield to maturity and I'm going to show you in the Microsoft uh, Excel area or Microsoft Excel software how to find yield to maturity at an easier way. So when you're investing in bonds, we, we want to back up for a second and in one of the previous lessons I explained why companies issue bonds and why investors want to get into those bonds as an investment or port, uh, part of their portfolios. And a lot of people assume that bonds are risk-free. However, I'm going to show you what the risks are, and that is things like credit risk and inflation risk, but also uh, interest rate risk. Because interest rates like to change, and that, that depends upon the economy and whatnot. So when those interest rates change, I want to first say that there's a little secret. When interest rates go up, Bond prices go down. When bond prices go up, interest rates lessen or go down. And so they have an opposite effect, if that makes sense. You'll, and you'll see why. It's basically because the gap in between what you paid is what you'll receive back in interest or coupon payments. So obviously the ROI is uh, the, the factor here. The more you pay for something, the less ROI. And the less you pay for something, the bigger the return. So as a beginner, there's a couple things that I need to know. That is simple interest, coupon yield, current yield, and also, here's the complexity of things, and that's compound interest and yield to maturity. So we're going to assume that in the previous lesson, we used a $1,000 bond or par value bond, and the maturity was 30 years. And the bond yield is paying 10%. Now, that's a high interest rate, but that I, I, just for this purpose, I'm going to use 10% to make things easier. And then remember that coupon payments are paid semi-annually, so twice a year. So everything that we're going to do in these formulas, we have to consider semi-annually the formula for compound interest. I'm going to show you the easier way. So let's dive over into the Excel document. And as you can see, I laid everything out for you. And right here is the formula for yield to maturity. Right here is the bond price, the maturity in years, the coupon yield at 10%, the simple interest. Now the simple interest is all of our coupon payments paid with no, no extra percentage on return or anything. It's just a flat rate, $50 uh, one time for the first six months, $50 the next, and so on for the next 60 periods. So as you can see, you would take 60 times 50, and that gives us the 3,000, and then our coupon payment. I've also showed you how to come up with the coupon yield, and that's coupon payment divided by par value, or the bond price, and then also the coupon payment equals the par value times the coupon yield. Okay, and then down here I showed you the compound interest for 30 years. That's assuming that to take our coupon payments and compound that into another investment that's paying the same amount per se as our bond. So our bond's paying 10%. So we would compound that over the next uh, 60 payments and we would actually receive 17,679. And that's why compounding the is phenomenal. Okay, so I mentioned simple interest, compound interest, but what about the coupon yield and the current yield? The current yield, let's say that the bond now is paying or you're having to pay $1,200. So we would literally take the coupon payment divided by that 1200 and that gives us 8.3% now. So the bond or the coupon yield that this buyer had, had uh, paid was at 10%, but now the coupon yield in the present day is 8.3%. So this is where the risks are associated with bonds. Uh, the, the interest rates, they change. They increase and decrease. And so we're going to dive into the yield to maturity. And how we formulate that is equals rate. And this is the key factor here. Everything is in semi-annual terms. So we'll treat these numbers and these values as semi-annually because in the end of the formula, we'll times that by two to make that the full year. So it would be the number of payments, and we're going to say we're doing this at a 15 at the uh, year 15 mark. So we're going to do 30, and then the payment is 50, and then this this present value or or yes this PV is what we're paying for the bond now. And remember, you have to make that a negative because you're paying it out. So that's the key. So we're doing 1,200. And the original bond price was 1,000 times two to finish this out and make it uh, the, the year. And it's now at an 8%. So the yield to maturity is 8%. Uh, let's do one more. And let's say that we're doing, we're gonna pay less for the bond. So now let's do 800. And now we're, we're 
the interest rate on that is 13% to yield to maturity. So as you can see, when bond prices go down, the interest rates go up, and when interest rates go down, bond prices go up. Yield to maturity is right here, the rate, the number at, at which you're receiving those bonds. So in like, say it's 15 years, you would obviously do the, the coupon 30. If you're receiving it uh, around coupon 50 and 52, you would use the 52. So that's how we determine yield to maturity. I hope that helps you uh, and, th and that makes sense. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, investingwithchris.com. And that's it for this lesson. I'll see you next time.